Why do you think music is such a powerful tool for reaching youth? Well, music has been the tool of the unheard, you know, since time immemorial, you know, and and it will, it will continue to be the tool of, of the youth specifically, because the youth are the people who are the tastemakers, you know, the youth are the people who make things cool, make things happen, you know, especially now with the, with the, the BLM movement and all the, the unrest that's happening right now and all all of this is happening because young people have decided to to move on this this unjust situation that we're in right now and you know there's there's been some great music that has come out of that you know like protest music has been huge in, since forever you know and especially in the 90s you know with you know groups like nwa and you know so Music will always be the tool that will be used by the youth to spread their message. Yeah, absolutely. That's such an amazing uh, thing to say. Definitely, I know in Halifax, I've heard some music that has come out of the BLM protests and movements that are happening here. So I love that you're talking about the language of the unheard. Um, just myself as a queer individual, I know growing up in rural Nova Scotia, a way that I connected to the queer community was through music made by queer artists and kind of navigating those underground unspoken scenes and seeing what people are saying through lyrics and through beats and through music and stuff. So right. really cool world to explore those mm -hmm. different messages. Maybe we could jump right into a song. What happened to the light that you used to want? Sun along shines deep inside your bones of feeling on to my mind, up through my feet. Can't you see that I've been dancing through the night? Dancing on my own, smoking while I drive. Cry when I'm alone, the feeling is On to my mind, up through my feet. Baby, can't you see? I pop one or two or three or five. I stay wishing you were mine. I just need to take some time. I just need to take some time. Oh, I got goosebumps and everything. I'm living for that. <laughs> like vibing so hard off camera. Do you find the process of singing and songwriting to be meditative or to be a form of meditation are there other practices that you've kind of incorporated through your mental health journey or how has that evolved over the last couple of years? Yeah, I think it absolutely is meditative. And I think it came as I began to work on my mental health a little more. That's that's like one of the, the biggest things I miss about performing on stage is, you know, you get into that flow state and, you know, you just, it's, you like water, you know what I mean? And everything else just fades away. Everything is great and beautiful in that moment. Mm -hmm. I, I always try to do some some form of meditation every day. I suffer from anxiety, so I've learned to do breathing exercises and like controlled breathing and mindful breathing. Yeah, absolutely. That's exactly what I was looking for. Um, I connect with that a lot. I can never make this quiet down, so I've been trying to do a lot of meditation lately. And uh, it's uh, I like that you said there's some days you just try and close your eyes and clear your mind and other days it's breathing and stuff because it's very similar for myself the process is always changing and i think it's like that for a lot of people um so it's cool that you're talking about that because i find a lot of people see meditation or see some sort of mindfulness practice and it's very structured and it's very rigid and they find it doesn't really work for them but i think in reality it's ever changing ever evolving like water like water exactly it's always flowing were you always that open to sharing your story were you always comfortable connecting with an audience in that sort of manner no, I wouldn't say so. Um, I'd say that's something that developed uh, later in my life. I, I, I've sort of made it a point to, to be that way because in the past I was an extremely closed off person. You know, I, I was, you know, self-isolating before it was advised, you know, like, um, you know, I had trouble connecting with people and, you know, as, as I've, you know, since I've begun my mental health journey uh, I've sort of made it a point to always try and be as open as I can you know because uh, when you hold things back I, I've found that it just creates problems you know with 
whether that be with friends, with family, with with a lover, you know, it, it's just it's, as, at least for me, I find that it's better to be um, almost completely open with everything. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. I can relate to that a lot. Like as a mental health advocate, a lot of people that I talk to see advocates that are in these spheres that are doing these things. They mm. kind of like see us on a pedestal, and they think that we're like these invincible humans that are sharing our stories. Um, but when in reality, share, being so open like you are and sharing your story um, and talking about these issues, it requires a lot of vulnerability. Um, and there's a lot of power in sharing your story. So um, I think when it comes to entering these mental health conversations, um, it does take some working mm. to get there. So it's awesome that you're super open about your stories um, and about your experiences with uh, your mental health struggles and your mental health journey. Mm. Someone somewhere is going to see it, hear it, view it, and it's going to hit, hit home with them. Exactly. And that's why we do it. Is there one message that you really want to drive home to the audience that's watching this or anyone that views the video afterwards? Is there one message that you'd want to share with us? If you feel like giving up, hold out until tomorrow because there's always a light at the end of the tunnel love that we gotta get it out today yeah we gotta do it our own way yeah y'all guarantee the best we play yeah pay no money what the way's been saying i've been wondering what we gonna do now that we're through with the old news, yeah, we could go out for the night, crumble double cup, not a steel light. We could just chill to the morning light. If it go wrong, I'm 